shoved it in there. It's none of it secure. If I lift this up, it's all falling out. But I've kind of got an idea where I want it. Now I'm going to go back and add my ribbons, picks in there, and I'm going to secure everything down with wire. Hot glue is great, but in Texas heat, it doesn't stay that well all the time. So now I'm going to go ahead and secure, add my ribbon picks where I want them, and tie everything nice and tight and down so that when it falls off the door accidentally, it doesn't <laughs> destroy the whole work of art. Yeah. Um, and I call it that, a work of art. Absolutely. All right, so let's go ahead and tie down. Um, Is there like a rhyme or reason? I mean, do you take everything off or do you hold it and secure it from underneath? How do you do this? Uh, when I go to tie down, I take all the balls off because they fall. Mm -hmm. And I did show you what they look like after you glue them. So they don't come apart when you stand them That's up. That's my favorite tip right um, there. Non-glued? Oh, yep. Glued. It just gives you a better um, thing. Yep. And it doesn't, sometimes when you put it, shove it into the mesh so much, the balls disappear and the mm -hmm. mesh eats them. Mm -hmm. This way, when they're together like that, you don't have to shove them so far in the mesh to make them stay pretty. Great tip. So, um, I, move my, I remove the balls, keep the picture in my brain of where I want them, but they usually roll all over the place. So it's just easy to take them out. And then I usually start with um, putting in my big picks first. Most of your picks are pre-wired, so it takes little to no effort to actually put them on the wreath because they're already wired, but the problem sometimes is that their stems are too long. Like these picks, the stem is way too long. So I'm gonna take my wire cutters and cut them apart. Notice I went for my big spot, my focal point first, and I left all that stuff in there because it's not gonna move much. So I've removed all the glorious Hobby Lobby tags don't forget to remove that. They don't look that great. <laughs> um, and I start with knowing that my flower is not going to sit like that sideways. So I actually bend it so it's at a 90 degree angle so that it slips right underneath the wreath, mm -hmm. under everything. And once I have that spot out, mm -hmm. I can actually just come back around that same spot and secure it by wrapping that wire. So you're just twisting it around the garland? I'm just twisting it around. And because I made that 90 degree angle, I know that my flower is going to stay standing straight up. Mm. It's not going to tilt to the side and then have to manhandle it later to get it to go right. Mm. So here's my flower. Pretty. And I also got it to stay above my mesh so it doesn't suck in like sometimes they do. So again, kind of measure it out. Give myself that 90 degree, knowing how high I want it to sit above my mesh. So it looks like that. And then I'm going to just dig in there and wrap it around. How many times do you wrap it around? Just as many as you feel? Like usually once or twice, as many as I feel safe doing yeah. with the amount of wire that I have. Okay. Um, some wrap better than others, some wrap easier than others. Yeah. But if you only hot glue, you're asking for attic trouble later when you store them. Yeah. The attic seems to eat hot glue mm -hmm. um, and melts it. At least it does here in Texas. Absolutely. I never tried had a freeze issue before, but then again, <laughs> not in Houston. No, nope. we've never had the use for Uggs either, so I don't understand why they sell them out here. Mm -hmm. um, fashion yeah. statement. Fashion. All right, so I'm gonna put my next piece in. These are the feathers. They have a shorter stem mm -hmm. and a lighter stem, so it's easier. And you're Over. doing the same thing, just wrapping same it around. Thing. Wrapping it around. Do you wrap it around the main? Um, I wrap it exactly where I wrapped to start with with the deco mesh. So wherever my poof hole is, yeah. that's exactly where I'm going to wrap it. Okay. I'm later going to come back and I'm going to flip this upside down and I'm actually going to hot glue as well. So two sources of control mm -hmm. to keep your things exactly where you want them. So if you have to ship, they ship pretty. Mm. And then um, it also gives me a little bit 
a little bit more stability. So you do the right angle on all of your picks? I do. That way you don't have to manhandle as much yeah. um, around the stems because they're already in the right direction. Okay. Okay. All right. I've added the big pieces that I've already pre-wired and I tucked them in and around and I got them pretty much attached to the garland now. I'm sorry, the swag now. And now I'm going to start adding my balls and my little ribbons. And with the balls, for the three sets of balls, I always use my sprigs that have at least five on it. Hmm. And so I'm going to add my five first and I'm just putting it right in that same spot that I is this on the, on the ear? Poof. Is this, this the, is an ear. Yeah, okay. This is one ear. Yeah. It's going to go in one ear and then oh, out the other. <laughs> but technically it'll be in and in. So I have the poof of ribbon. I'm not going to really worry about spreading it out now, but I'm going to kind of make it in center. Take my balls. Open up my wire again. Wiring it to the same exact spot that I just wired the ribbon to. In that ear I'm spot. Do I get it all done? Looking like that. Pretty. As a poof. And this is a Almost looks like a holly leaf, yeah. Kind yeah. of. It's sprigs out. Yeah. We have attached everything and stuck our ribbons on, and it's looking all pretty, but. I'm still not satisfied with making sure everything's on there okay. Even though if I hold it up, it should stay. I want to make sure it stays. So now I'm going to flip it upside down. And I'm going to use that lovely hot glue gun to make sure my pieces stay where I want them. And I just use a lot of hot glue. And I just hot glue where I put my big sticks and stems because I get a lot of pressure on there. So I'm just gluing I'm it. glued and we have flipped back over and then nothing coming off this wreath in a Mach 40 wind now. So everything <laughs> is not only tied, it's also everything is glued to the back so that nothing wiggles, moves or anything else. And so my last part is putting on the bottom bow. You can do it left, you can do it right, you can do it centered, I've done crossbows, it's whatever you feel like. But my first step is I've cut a couple of streamers and I just grabbed my ribbon, they're cut to 28 inches, 14 and 14, those were 14, so it's now just one 28 piece pulled in half, kind of like a bigger version of the little ribbon sprigs long wire and I'm going to come across my entire bottom piece and wire it on. All right now I go with the bow. Just made a simple little poofy bow to love and enjoy. Could have made it bigger, could have made it smaller, just whatever I felt like at the time. And I'm going to wire it down through the wreath. Both are done. We have the bow going. It's on the bottom. Now we're on to the hanger part of it. Some people like to use a uh, ribbon on the back, and I'm cool with that too. With the swag, because we're building our own form, I find if I have a ribbon in the back, the top piece has a tendency to pop out and it pulls it together. So I like to use my handy dandy hanger again. I've broken off a, an end cap piece of the hanger, and I'm gonna go ahead and kind of straighten it out a little. And then after straightening it, I'm actually gonna bend it in half. <laughs> just so that my half is a little bit more symmetrical than it was before. I hate to do this part because I always have to come back and re-fluff my ribbons after I flip it over, but it's a necessary evil. So I come between at the halfway point. I put the wire hanger underneath the back of it, and you see the two spots sticking out. Mm -hmm. And I'm just gonna fold them over so that they stay together. And I'm gonna fold it over so it stays together. This prevents your garland from kind of squishing out the sides. It still does it, it just doesn't do it as bad 
as when you have the ribbon behind it. Now I can add my ribbon if I want to this, but I don't. I usually just hang it via that little hook that we now have. And I go back and I have to fluff my bow out again because I've squished it so and pretty. moved my ribbons. And so now we have a Christmas sweater ready so for pretty. auction to sell again. About what are the dimensions of that, you think? This one is usually standard. They're 42 inches long and about 28 inches, 29 inches well, wide. Leslie, thank you for showing us. I learned a ton. I'm very excited. You got me inspired to get back into this, get away from the home stuff and get to decorating. So okay. thank you very much for You're coming welcome. and being my first guest. Woohoo! Yay! <laughs>